Rapa Nui, more commonly known as Easter Island, is one of the most remote places in the Pacific to be settled by humans, and for that matter, in the world. The Polynesian settlement of the island and the construction of the massive statues, or moai, which the island is famous for, have been of particular interest to archaeologists for a long time. However, the archaeological record of the island doesn't merely consist of large stone statues, but evidence for these people's daily lives as well. Obsidian tools known as mata'a are unique to Rapa Nui's archaeological record. The function of these tools, and how they relate to the settlement, deforestation, and socio-political organization of the island has been an important archaeological debate one which we will discuss in this video while I flintknap replica mata'a from obsidian. Mata'a are tools made from large obsidian flakes with narrow stems. The stems of these tools are the most heavily modified part produced through either unifacial or bifacial flaking. This means that the flakes are removed from the stem from both or one of the faces of the obsidian flake. This deliberate shaping was important as the stem is where the tool attaches to a handle, also called a haft. The edge of these tools was actually left unmodified, making use of the insanely sharp obsidian edge. The edges can be rounded, spade-shaped, pointed, flat, and perpendicular to the stem, or irregular. The flake blanks that they were reduced from did follow a specific reduction strategy, but mata as a whole were produced from any suitable obsidian flake. When the first Polynesian people came to Rapa Nui around a thousand years ago, they would have found a wealth of obsidian for making tools. The Pitcairn Henderson Island group, where they likely came from, obsidian only occurs in small and pebbly pieces, while at Rapa Nui, obsidian can be found in large, high quality deposits. Despite being only 164 square kilometers in size, Rapa Nui has four different obsidian quarries, known as Arito, Rano Kao 1, Rano Kao 2, and Motu Iti, the last of which is located on a tiny island just off of the coast. When making Mata'a, the flint napper would start by removing very large flakes from an obsidian block. These large flakes, in turn, would become cores for Mata'a blank production. These blanks would be struck from the ventral face, with which the smooth and freshly exposed stone would produce a sharp and relatively uninterrupted edge from the flank blank. This method of mata'a production is called the kambewa technique. Blanks were selected that didn't have too thin of an edge, but were more sturdy, as obsidian is brittle and easily breaks. So what were mata'a used for? Our most objective understanding of mata'a and other stone tool function comes through using stone tools. When a stone tool, be a flake, projectile point, axe, or any other kind is used, it develops a microscopic polish and damage that is distinct, called use wear. For instance, cutting meat will lead to a diffuse, light polish across the face of a tool, while sawing wood leaves a more distinct, well-formed sheen. By performing experiments with replica tools, archaeologists can understand what specific activities and materials lead to specific wear on archaeological examples. Several studies have applied use wear analysis to mata'a from Rapa Nui. What researchers found was that mata'a were used for a wide variety of tasks. The use wear results indicated that they were used for woodworking, cutting fibrous plants, processing meat and fish, cutting soft plant materials like bark, leaves, and vegetables, and for engraving hard materials like bone and shell. Additionally, use for analysis can be used to determine if a tool was hacked to a handle. And for mata'a examined, most showed evidence of this. The use for suggests that mata'a were likely hacked to a handle and used as multi-purpose knives and implements. Historically hafted examples of mata'a housed at the British Museum and Chicago Field Museum are hafted to short handles which would be used for such a purpose. The stem of the tool is set into the wooden handle, bound with a fine plant fiber cord, and secured with wedges to tighten the whole thing up. 
One of the debates regarding Mata'a was their use as weapons. When the infamous Captain Cook visited Rapa Nui, he reportedly described one as tipping his spear. Other ethno-historic writings also give accounts of warfare in Rapa Nui, and people have assumed that Mata'a were artifacts used to tip weapons of war. In both popular culture and in archaeological literature, the history of Rapa Nui has been portrayed as a story of human greed, with settlers coming to the islands, deforesting it as their population grows, and then a lack of resources and warfare causing a collapse in population. However, modern archaeological research does not support this narrative. One of the large problems with assuming Mata'a's weapons is the lack of standardization in their shapes. Attempts to classify Mata'a based on blade outline have found a nearly continuous degree of edge variation, with no preference for designs that are more pointed and more suited for use as a spear tip. Many Mata'a are thick, heavy, and ill-suited for piercing. While the nature of obsidian does mean that Mata'a are razor sharp, their design doesn't particularly suit them for use as weapons. These use wear studies have not supported Mata'a use as weapons either, as they lack impact fractures which occur from projectile use. Finally, while skeletal remains of people on Rapa Nui do commonly bear signs of interpersonal conflict, these bones do not bear wounds that would suggest that these wounds are fatal, which would be a more prevalent case if warfare was so widespread. European contact, like in so many cases, is more likely the cause for historic population decline on Rapa Nui, from violence, the slave trade, and from smallpox. Mata'a, rather than being an artifact associated with the supposed decline in Rapa Nui's history, are instead a product of ingenuity and resilience from Rapa Nui's people. For generations, Mata have served as everyday, multi-purpose tools in Rapa Nui's history. And it is for this reason that I think Mata'a are such a fascinating artifact for replication.